Hello, welcome to the All or Not podcast. Our official sponsors are KR Couriers and Transport Limited. This is a Northwest based courier company delivering all across the UK. They can assist in home moves and removals to large, heavy, and bulky items, collections, and drop offs. Fast, safe, and reliable deliveries. Please get in touch for a free quote. You'll find all the information within the description. Thank you. Hello everybody and welcome to the Billy Moore podcast and it's my my special guest today, Shem. You know right now. Shem Rock. Yeah, What's happening, man. mate? Just training for my next fight, just living life. How, yeah. you, how are you feeling? Yeah, I yeah, feel good, a little bit sore, but it comes with the territory, doesn't it? Yeah, well thanks for coming on, mate. You've got an incredible story. You know, you first come to light a few months ago when... Um, when I seen you on, on, on social media and, and, and I read about your story and your background and I thought this is powerful and you were up you were in jail yeah. when we were speaking yeah <laughs> that's how things happen <laughs> I've been there myself um, so tell us a little bit about yourself and, and what's been going on um, I'm from Liverpool as most of you will know um, grew up in Toxteth um, I'm an MMA fighter and I think I've come to the attention of a lot of people because I was in jail. I just got out. I done six months on remand and got acquitted of a crime that I didn't commit. Um, you were yeah. on the run for ten years, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, I was going to slot that in then. I, yeah. was, I was on the run for ten years. Massive. Yeah. How did yeah. that feel, lad? Um, do you know what? When I first left, I was only about nineteen, let's say, and I didn't think I was going to last two weeks. I definitely didn't think I was going to find martial arts and become a professional MMA fighter. Mm. So when I was three, four years in and people are like, but weren't you looking over your shoulder? Weren't you nervous? I didn't think I was going to last more than a week, lad. So the fact that I was three, four years in and fighting MMA was a big bonus. So I was just, yeah. I was just living every day as it come, to be honest. Yeah, yeah brilliant. And that was where? In, in Malaysia? Yeah, when I first left, I went to Thailand. I spent maybe six months in Koh Samui in Thailand. And then I went to Malaysia, and then I was in Malaysia for a long time, maybe five or six years. Uh, done, done, a, done a bit of time in Dublin as well. Done about two years, two and a half years in Dublin. But yeah, overall, I was gone for ten years. Didn't you think about uh, getting involved in the Muay Thai when you were in Thailand? Was uh, was that did it come later? The MMA. Um, so when I first started, um, I was in Malaysia. I was by myself. Didn't have no mates. Didn't know no one. And um, I've always been a fan of MMA. I've always watched the UFC. Even like I used to watch the old ones like Pride and Strike Force. I've always been a fan. And I always liked watching the fights when it go to the ground. I yeah. prefer more of the grappling. So I always I like knew what Jiu Jitsu was. I did the Gracies and that. Um, so I always wanted to like just try it. And when I was in Malaysia, I seen a gym that does Jiu Jitsu. So I was like, you know what, I'll go down and try it. I remember I walked in the gym. And I got absolutely battered. I got choked out by little kids, by, <laughs> by women, everything. <laughs> and I just remember going home thinking, what? I don't know what this is, but I want to be able to do that to other people. So from that day, I was in two feet. I was just going to the gym every day, three times a day, just jiu-jitsu, jiu-jitsu, jiu-jitsu. Yeah, I travelled all around Southeast Asia, competing and winning all tournaments all over Southeast Asia. And it wasn't until... I was getting to a good level. My coach said to me, what are you doing for money, lad? Because there's no money in jiu-jitsu, really. Not like there is an MMA, you know, where you can make serious money. Yeah. And I was like, I don't really care about money. I'm just enjoying doing it. And he's like, yeah, but you can't say that when you're 13. You've you got kids and you've got no money to support yeah. yourself. Paying the so, bills, isn't it? So, yeah. So then I just went and done an MMA fight. I didn't have any striking, didn't have any really wrestling. I was just going down. I just go taking people down and just choking them out. And after my first MMA fight, I just knew, like, yeah, I'm, I'm doing this. I love jiu-jitsu. I'll always love jiu-jitsu. Jiu-jitsu is my number one thing, but MMA is everything. It's like the full... The, the, the most, full spectrum yeah, of the, the movements. And it's the most realistic form of combat. One-on-one, unarmed combat. There's nothing, there's nothing that tops it, is there, really? No, it's a mixed martial arts, isn't it? It's, like, it's something I avoided as well, you know, like... 
So I, I'd, I'd spent a little bit of time in uh, Taiwan and, yeah. you know, Southeast Asia. And I'd boxed as a kid, you know, before I even like got involved in Muay Thai, I was, I was, I was living in Taiwan for a bit. And I went to this, this gym and they were, um, they were getting involved in, in wrestling and hook, you know, all the grappling and that. And I was like, oh, fuck, I'm going to get battered. What was the me. gym called? Oh, mate, I can't even remember. It was just, it wasn't even, a, I don't even think it was, um, I was there long enough to even remember what it was called. Yeah. I didn't go. No, I fought in no. Taiwan. Did you? Yeah, This yeah. was in Tape. Have you been to Tape? Tape, yeah, yeah, yeah that's where the fourth, yeah. This was when um, I found out that the 101 building was the tallest building in the world, you know, that big glass one in the yeah. centre. Yeah, yeah. So it was going back about what? I think it's the Burj Khalifa now in Two, Dubai, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, 2000, yeah, 2006. But yeah, I went there, it was something that... They were all talking about like wrestling and grappling. I think it was getting on the scene back then. I thought, fuck that, mate. I'm not getting choked out by no one. You know what I mean? I'm just, a, <laughs> just about managed throwing a fucking few lefts here and, and, a, and a, a right. So, you know, you've got this this love, this enthusiasm, this passion now for MMA. Yeah? Yeah. Right, but in the background, you've got, you know, it was an aggravated big that the, the yeah. dad you're on. And that must yeah. have been, that's a heavy charge. It's a big charge. It's yeah. a big charge. It's, yeah. it's a, it carries a 10, if not. Yeah. you know more yeah. at some stages so what what happened because you've got this hanging over you and i know what it's like to be on your toes especially for the time you you were on your toes for yeah. but in the beginning I, I i agree with what you say if you haven't been caught within the first couple of weeks you get complacent you take things for granted you, you're untouchable right it happened to me <laughs> i was gonna get fucking nick sooner or later but i didn't think it was ever gonna happen yeah. until it did yeah so you've got that in the um, the in the background. That's that had to be a hindrance. It's, it, well, it obviously was, you know, to for you to go forward in in, in on your journey. Yeah. Tell us about like where all that came from. What what happened? How come you were suspected and you were on your toes today? So in 2013, 2014, um, me and my cousin were both wanted for the Quran. Uh, my cousin was there that night. He, he he got remanded into custody, and he ultimately pled guilty, and he got five years in jail. When he got remanded, I got arrested not long after, and I got bail. So in my mind, I'm thinking, just literally just got out the police station. Oh, I've got bail. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna beat this. Yeah. They, they obviously know I weren't there. Get a call off my solicitor as soon as I've left the police station. Um, mate, it's our police have made a mistake. They were supposed to remand you into custody. Can you come back, please? Can you come back? I've gone, yeah. Tell them I'll be there in the morning. <laughs> Booked me ticket to the Euro, on the Eurostar. Off to France. Flew from France to India to Thailand. And that was me gone, lad. I was 19. I was young. And I was thinking, I'm not going to jail for something I haven't done. Did your family all stick together to help you get abroad? Or did you have a few shavings? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was all right. Yeah, yeah. you were flying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, like um, at the time my family were telling me don't run and that as, as your family do well if it weren't you why are you running you know yeah. all of that one but I knew the system lad yeah. I knew I, I, had you been away before nah no nah you just, had, you just had an understanding of of what um, how things operated you will do yeah. if you're from the south end because you know yeah, I've been around yeah I grew up there myself from Chatsworth estate okay. you know so I know I was a kid there, and I know how, how things operated through family and, and friends who'd been away, and yeah. you know the system. You know the system, don't you? Yeah. So in your mind, you were like, "I'm getting fucking." I'm out. getting stitched. Yeah. I, that's what I thought in my head. I'm getting stitched up for this lot. Yeah. Yeah. And it was a bit mad. Like, I'm not going to say I didn't deserve it because the lifestyle I was living. Mm. I just feel like there's so many crimes that I committed back then that I never got caught for. And I feel like the one that I didn't do was the one that bit me on the arse, so to say. I just think it's karma. Yeah. It's it, just it, God's yeah. way of saying, like, you need to pay for what you've done, lad. But do you know what? You, you kind of paid for it in a sense with, okay, even though you didn't do it and you were telling me that you've done stuff in the past that you should have been caught for, you pay for it in ways that you wouldn't have known. Exactly, you know, yeah. In, in, yeah. In the anxiety, the fear. The loss of family, yeah. the mission of home, yeah. you know, all that, you know, the, the longing, the wanting, the want, you know, it's it's the, you're getting robbed of all that, you know, and then eventually, you know, it fucking does bite you on the ass, doesn't it? You know it yourself. You've been to jail. Jail's not a rehabilitation centre. They no. say it is. They say you go to jail to get better. 
I only know people in that system coming out worse. I ain't never seen anyone come out better. Maybe the odd few man who only done a two, three week lie down and then they go, whoa, I'm never getting involved in anything. But majority of man who come out of that place come out worse. Yeah. And I feel like I, I did need rehabilitating. I'll, I'll tell you that myself. I was selling drugs, running around the city, doing madness, having beef with man. And got, it took me, because I, I never had no, no ambitions, no dreams. The only thing I knew were the people around me. And they were all drug dealers, they were all criminals. When I looked, who's got the nicest cars, who's got the baddest women, who's got the best... It was all the drug dealers. Yeah, all the even, temptation and all, yeah, all that. Even like the biggest athletes when I was growing up in the city. They want to come down Granby and Lodgy and chill with the chill with the gangsters. Yeah. So I was looking at them going, what? I want to be a gangster. I want to be like my dad and his mates and them. But it's no lifestyle to preach because you're no. not. it's not till you're in it that you realise it's not all glam and glitter and it's not all money and fame. It's, it's not nice, lad. But it took me to go through what I've been through to find my passion in life which is definitely jiu-jitsu. And don't get me wrong, I love MMA, but jiu-jitsu is my real love. It took, it took me to find what I was, what I believe I was put on this planet to do, to fight and compete and to teach and show the next generation. It took me to find that, to then realise, like, this is, this, this, that life ain't for me, lad. You know, sometimes, you know, you're a young lad, so you, it's obviously you took, it'll take you to some, to some, some lengths first before you realise that like you know this is rock bottom this is not for me yeah. you know you're going to have to go on that that path for a little bit and as they say you know bad company corrupts good character and you're living down a south end I'm not like separating communities or areas but I know like Liverpool late, it's like I, I grew up there I was there for decades it was a, it was a palsy private area you know and all all um, y- y- your peers were all standing on the corner like you said you were inspired by like drug dealers and gangsters and, and all that way of life. And for me, you know, I, I, I was kind of like, I was inspired by like my older cousins who were all smoking gear. <laughs> they, yeah. they just looked cool at the time. Yeah. And I, I got trapped in that era of like that, that addiction and, and that cycle of prison institutions and, you know, the mental health. And not, you know, for me, mental health wasn't even fucking spoken about. Yeah. You, you were just on a bend. That was it. And if someone said to, it, said to you, like, oh, he's fucking nuts, him. He's, he's a psycho. I felt comfortable with them kind of labels. Yeah. Because it kind of kept people away. Yeah, yeah. You know, and if people say to you, like, oh, fucking nuts there, lad. There's something about it that makes you feel powerful. Yeah. You know, they've got a little bit of fear there. He thinks I'm nuts. When in reality, that's no not who you want to be. Me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're growing up in that, that way. No one's going to mess with me because they think I am. And it's in reality, you just... No, for me anyway, in reality, I was just a scared, sort of lost boy who just wanted to, to fucking be a part of something. Yeah. But I didn't know where I fitted in in life. And like you said, for me, that wasn't that wasn't the path I wanted to be on. You know, I had to go through all these consequences to get to the path where, you know, the right path for me. And that sounds like you've caught that early on in life. Yeah, that was you, lucky. You must have been young thinking, oh, no, this is enough, enough here for me. Yeah, the hardest part, it's not me, my family, lad. Mm. Your ma getting the door kicked off by police all the time, or you can't, you, you wanted, you can't go and see your family because your family, like, I don't want to, I don't want to bring trouble to my door, or my little cousins, and my nephews, and my nieces, and my little brother, and they're hearing what's going on around the city stabbing, shootings, drug deal, and they're asking, Was that you? Are you with them? I, I, I wish I could do that. I want to. And I'm telling them, nah, hmm. what are you on about, lad? Stay in school. <laughs> yeah, at school. Hmm. They don't want to wear it because they only know what they see. Yeah, so you and became you a role model for your nephews. and Pff, Now things are different, lad. Yeah. Things are different. The people that used to walk down the street that I maybe went to school with in 2013 would see me and go, shit, there's Shem. Boom, hoods up, cross over the road, didn't see him. Now these same people, can I get a picture with you, lad? My little cousins are all watching me fights, sending me pictures. I'm watching your fights on YouTube. Brilliant. Or I want to be like you, can I come to the gym? Bro? Do you know what I mean? My family are proud of me now, lad. My family see I'm doing well. I'm making money doing something positive. And not only that, look at the next generation. We can show them now, like, you don't have to sell drugs. Hmm. You don't have to be in a gang. When I was a kid, name one MMA fighter when I was a kid from our city. Name one boxer from our city when I was a kid. 
we didn't really have these role models, especially from South Liverpool, who we could go, wow, yeah, Tomo from next door, he fights in the USC. But you can say that about me, lad. I think that, like, from the South End, there was, like, back in the day, there was, like, the likes of Alfie Lewis. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, Robbie Fowler. Robbie Fowler. These were, these were, like, above and beyond. I mean, like, Alfie, you know, he was, he was legit, when he was, was he, back then? Fucking hell. See what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's a hard one to shout, isn't you, it? You're gonna but how many drug dealers could you name who were millionaires now um, back then? Um, you be it all day like yeah, that. Eh, yeah. Eh, eh, eh. Hell be, yeah, the list is endless, isn't it? And you see these men who would maybe celebrities, who would they want to come and be around? All the gangsters. That was the, the in thing then. So it's a no brainer, isn't it? Yeah, the they're of... looking at them like that, and I'm looking at the athlete going, nah, I'm looking at them now. Yeah. So that's all we knew. So now. You, your whole perspective changed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're involved in um, in in next gen, aren't you? You're part of next generation. Yeah, yeah. With uh, Paddy and Molly, yeah. you know, both being on great guys. You know, yeah, I'm looking forward to um, seeing their future because they 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 really, you know, they're quite positive in what they're doing. Yeah. Um, so did you? So you've come back from Malaysia. Tell us what's happened. You've you've gone to Dublin. So along the way throughout my career, me being wanted has always put big blocks on me I'd get signed by big promotions I was signed by one championship the biggest promotion in Asia I was on the one the first episode of one warrior series won the contract me and another girl Stan Fertex she's gone on to win the Muay Thai belt the kickboxing belt and MMA belt she, she's probably a millionaire lad you know what I mean we got signed at the same stage <laughs> she's gone on and then lad I've got back to Malaysia after getting signed I mean, all this Rich Franklin saying, ah, I'm going to make you a champion. You're going to be you're going to be a big star. I've got back to Malaysia. Uh, Merseyside Police have been on the phone, mate. We're going to have to terminate that contract. Bam. Gone. Me, Jim. Well, most of our fighters are on one championship. If you can't get signed to one championship, we don't want you anymore. You've got to leave. Kicked out me, Jim. Got nowhere to train. So I'm sitting there scratching my head thinking, Ras, I've got no gym. I've got no career opportunities because me, I was... I was training towards one championship, though UFC weren't my goal because I was in Asia. Then I've got no gym, no career prospects. I thought, where can I go from here? I thought, do you know what? Where's the closest thing to Liverpool? That's not Liverpool, where I can't get extradited from. I'm going to Ireland. So I flew to Ireland. I'm thinking, yeah, I'm going to train in uh, McGregor's gym. So I went down to McGregor's gym, was training there for a good few months. One day, the owner's just come in, said, I need to speak to you in the office, lad. Come in the office, big on the screen, there's my mugshot. <sighs> he said, tell me what happened. So, I, me, I'm honest, lad, I got nothing to hide. I ain't got mm. no shame. I told him, I did used to be in a gang. I did used to sell drugs, whatever, whatever. But I found martial arts and it changed my life, bro. You're talking, at this point, you're talking eight, nine years. Yeah. So, I'm like, I don't do that anymore. And all he was saying was, but did you rob it? I'm like, no, I'm not a robber. It weren't me. I went there that night and he's like but you want it though aren't you I'm like yeah that was it he goes you know who I am you know who trains here and who I coach can't have the bad publicity on the gym you gotta go so I got kicked out of there as well so now I'm scratching my head like did you ever meet like Connor McGregor in his gym do you know what I never met Connor um, I met everyone else who trains there um, James Gallagher's Kean Cowley's they're all sound. I, I enjoyed it there. I got on with everyone there. Just, just weren't meant to be for me. Yeah, so so I've, been, I've now been kicked out of McGregor's gym at this point. And it was a blessing in disguise, really. Because then I went on to find Dublin Combat Academy, which was me real home. Like, the vibe there, they're just, they're just like us. They're the lads. They didn't care about the criminal thing. They were yeah. like, what? That's what we <laughs> open a gym for, to get lads off the street. Yeah. yeah, we don't care about all of that. Like, I'm training with Colin Mahone and Craig Coakley. Like, Craig Coakley is an absolute machine. One of the best athletes, one of the best strikers I've ever seen. He, he, I feel like in, in the future, he's going to go on to be special and people are going to rave about him. Yeah. He's a bit under the radar right now. I don't know why. <laughs> But well, yeah, I just got in with them and it's just a pure Muay Thai gym. So I was just doing Muay Thai every day for two years. So you've been trained in like the likes of Muay Thai, Jiu Jitsu, wrestling, grappling, everything, wrestling, yeah. boxing, MMA. What was, and, and like you said, you know, you, you, you favour Jiu Jitsu more than anything. Yeah, yeah. So when you're fighting, right, what's your style? 
I'm taking people down and I'm mauling them That's and it. choking them out. But I feel like I'm such an adaptable fighter where I've fought wrestlers and decided to anti-grapple and strike. I've fought strikers and decided to take them down and submit them. And then I've fought guys and I've been smart and just controlled positions and maybe throwed a few shots. And then when they get tired, attack the submission. Like, I feel like I'm good at studying opponents, seeing the weaknesses and playing it to my strengths. I feel like it's MMA. You've got to be able to do everything. And I feel like I can adapt and do everything. Yeah. Who was your inspiration in Liverpool then? <sighs> Bloody hell. Like... Who did, you t- who did you look up to when you were like training and and noticed that we're on the scene? I was watching Paddy fighting Cage Warriors before I'd even trained MMA. Mm. I was watching that until I was watching also guys outside of Liverpool. I used to love watching the old Hicks and Gracie tapes, the Jim Storm and his fights in, in Japan, there's no time limit bouts. Like for me, I know it's a bit bad to say, like, but for me, a decision's not really a win. If I win on decision, I'm not happy. <laughs> a finish is a win. To me, unarmed combat is a fight to the death. I'm trying to finish you and you're trying to finish me. If I win on decision, I'm going home sad. If I lose on decision, I don't feel like I lost. I feel like you won according to the judges. And that's why I like that old school, Gracie, they come in two hours, no time limit, and you see some of them matches went on for an hour and a half until one guy quits and now he chokes shit out or one guy gets his face caved in and it's, we need to stop this or he's going to die. That's what combat is to me. Yeah. yeah. So these show that your inspirations were like the likes of Darren and, and you wanted to... Yeah, you know. that, Darren, Paddy, but then I'm such a fan of the sport. I watch all these amateur guys coming up now and me being in Asia, I used to watch and go, what? Curtis Campbell? you lie, like, I'd love to train with him. He's He's, he's heavy. And then, like, you get to train with them. Or, or we even, like, we all speak on Instagram and that. We're all, it's a small community. So yeah. we all, we're all mates anyway, to be honest, pretty much. I know everyone from all different gyms. That's why I feel like when I come here and then I hear all the politics between the gyms, I'm like, not to do with me. I'm mates with him in that gym. I'm yeah. mates with him in that gym. So you haven't got an opinion on anyone? No, I'll train with anyone. Especially if you're a scouser, lad, I've got love for you. Simple. Yeah, I don't want to fight no scousers. <laughs> People ask me all the time who'd win in a fight between you and. I'm not fighting scousers, lad. There's a million people to fight out there. I'll go and fight a Londoner. I'll go and fight a man. I'll go and fight a guy from Japan. I'll go and fight a guy from Korea. Like, I'm not interested in fighting scousers. So how did you fund your lifestyle if you weren't getting paid in Southeast Asia? It was, it was Malaysia, weren't it? Yeah. Uh, I heard somewhere that your family were, were living there as well. Or? Yeah. Um, my me bro- me older brother, he was in Malaysia and he told me to, to come when I was in Thailand. He was like, come to Malaysia, lad, I've got you. So at first, I was living off the savings I had and living off my brother my brother was helping me and then like I had a real chip on my shoulder he's coming to the gym strings tied fucking it's like 30 degrees out there mm. tracked up still thinking like how I the perception I had for myself was not the perception that others had for me I really thought like people thought I was a scumbag I'm on the gym with like politi- yeah. politicians big businessmen I'm thinking these guys don't want to know me these just think I'm a scally these don't these and then it's like I'm, I'm working really hard in the gym and then afterwards these guys are coming up to me like wow what's your name wow you're from England wow nice to meet you and I'm like at first I just thought ah, they're just being nice and then it's not till like every day they're like can I get a picture with you or yeah. what are you doing after this do you want to come for food with us and then you, you start to speak with people from all different cultures all different countries all different backgrounds and it just opens your mind so much that I start to realise the, the person that I see myself as wasn't the person they see me f- yeah they see me for who I really was totally agree how my mates had seen me yeah the, the, the sound lad sound shem do you know what I mean they wouldn't see me like ah stay away from him he's a gangbanger no one saw me like that because I went gangbanging I was just training every day and then after a while all these people who I'm on the mats with they're the same people who you don't realise it they end up becoming your sponsors or they end yeah. up be- I, lad I never had to pay rent in an apartment I never had to pay for food. I had all food sponsors. Any any fight, any tournament that I was flying to, jiu-jitsu, you got to pay your own money. Lad, I was getting it all paid for by sponsors. I never had to pay for nothing. It's mad, isn't it? Because you Crazy. know what? It's like your, your past dictates how you feel. Yeah. So you've got, like, for me, I, I used to, like, see, I've, I work with the likes of Sony and Molly and, and I've worked with other people and I, I've sat across rooms and interviewed, 
you know, people I would never f- thought I'd be speaking to or be in the same room as because my life was just um, prison. It was it was constant crime. It was horrible. And you know, I know I've changed here, mm. but the past dictated how I felt. It was like I still didn't feel as if it was worthy sitting in the room with other people, and I felt shit. And I thought I was doing exactly the same as you. Ah, they don't fucking want to speak to me. I don't, don't want to know them because yeah. I think they don't want to know me. It so yeah, even that. so we sabotage you. Yeah, you know, exactly. So self sabotage. Is that self sabotage? I think, but fuck you, yeah, because I know you're gonna fuck me off, and you don't yeah. really want to know, and you're all this and that, and that you've got that self negative talk. And for me, I was just telling myself that I was shit. They weren't asked about me. I might as well go and carry on doing what I was doing because these are all different. And it's only now it's like that I feel, you know, like on the same like that that equilibrium, the the equality kind of kicks in. I'm mm-hmm. alright, I'm sad. People are asking, like you said, people are asking me for pitches, people are asking me to spend time in their company. Whereas yeah. before, the fucking door was shut, the car doors were shut, the fucking fridge door was shut, <laughs> every fucking door was shut on me. Bridges, bridges were burnt, I'd build them and burn them. You know, and it, it's like, this is why, you know, I was in, you know, you inspire me as well because I've seen your journey, although it's been brief from my part. Yeah. I've seen the positivity that you, you 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 give out, you know, and what you want to share. And you, as soon as you're sitting down, you say, you know, look, I was this, I was. You're not fucking yeah. trying to play the lie victim. Or hide no, just, on, yeah. You know, you know what I find when people are honest, it's more attractive. When you go, yeah. look, I was a fucking scumbag. I did fucking take the piss. I, I should have been there, and I did do that. That's reality. You know, when you're trying to like claim like fucking perfection. I was there saying, well, what, this shouldn't have happened to me. Look, mate, yeah. you made a few mistakes, a few poor decisions. You end up in the wrong place. Now it's about change. And if you change, then yeah, I'll respect that. You know, because, you know, you're doing something that's going to benefit not only yourself, but the people around you, your family, your nephews, you know, you hear it. So, you've, um, this must be a big one for you in Dublin. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's it's getting close now to fucking the UK, isn't it? Yeah. So what happened? Where, where, where did it all go wrong? Where well, where did it all go right? Wrong. That's I what I want to know. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I got asked to fight for the world title in Belfast. I went up there. I think I won in the first round, submitted the guy. And I'm coming back with the belt. Um, I'm in the gym. And then it's like, all these social media posts are all going up. Everyone's raving about it. And under every single post, all I'm seeing in the comments is all, you know it yourself, lad. No one says it off the real profile. Yeah. But all the haters come out the woodwork on all these fake profiles. He's a criminal. He's a burglar. He's a house robber. He's a tramp. <laughs> he, sh- he, shouldn't, he shouldn't be in this position. And now, boom, the new fights come up. He's going to defend his belt in Belfast. Yeah. Now all I'm seeing under the comments is, we're ringing the police. The police are going to be there. Da, 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 da. It, lad, it went off, lad. And I thought, I've always said it, lad, I'm, I'm not adding. I'm on social media. If you just want me, come and get me. And I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm focusing on my career. It is what it is. It's a good opportunity. I'm going to go there and fight. If I get nicked, I get nicked. So I went there, fought the fight. Um, that was my first professional loss. That I, I lost. Um, I fought an old teammate from SBG, <laughs> Nathan Kelly. Um, and I always, it's, lad, it's mad how the world works, you know, because I've always said to myself from day one, because all my me, all me family were telling me to come home and hand myself in. Yeah. My cousin done us five years and got out and said, lad, come and hand yourself in, bro. You'll beat it. You weren't there. I'll stand up in court and say you weren't there. So everyone was telling me to come back, but I was so focused on my career at this point. I'm like, I just want to train. I just want to fight. I'll come back. I'll come back next year. I'll come back. And it just that carried on like that until I was where I was. But I always promised myself one thing. My first loss, I'm going home. And it's like, I lost that fight and got nicked the next day in Belfast. I didn't I didn't have a chance to come home. <laughs> but everything meant to be for a reason, I feel like. And I feel like that was my time now, like, go and sort your shit out. And now now it's gone. The sky's the limit. Yeah, because I think I spoke to you. I'm not, I'm not too sure I was speaking to you before or maybe you'd seen you before. Yeah, we'd spoke before. And yeah, then before you'd been nicked. I didn't even know you'd been... Um, you were on your toes at the time. Yeah. So you've come <laughs> back and you just get remanded straight away, straight did you? Straight remanded, like... Um, no bail, no nothing. So we've come to court. Flight risk. We've come to court. We've asked for bail. They've laughed us out of court. They've, they've, um, they put me... They've, they remanded me into custody. And then they were saying... Um, 
if I put a judge in chambers application and I can get some good funds behind me that you'll get bail. So I'm like this thinking all positive and that like yeah. So we um, spoke to someone close to me and uh, we put a million quid up to get bail. So I'm thinking they're not denying that. Lad, they've come to me cell and being like, um, pack your stuff and that. You might be getting bail tomorrow. My ma's rang me on the on the air like, oh, I'm like that. Oh, you're all right, mum. She's like a police officer just knocked at mine, saying, can you can you stay here for this address? So I'm thinking, yeah, I might be getting out here. The next day, come, I'm standing by the door with my bags and that. Do the fuck get bail, lad? Do <laughs> 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 the fuck, bro? <laughs> they must have been laughing at me, going, "Yeah, watch this one." Yeah, just worried about take yeah. all the yolk away from him. Yeah, yeah. Did that just? Did your heart just sink? Do you know what? I, I, I just didn't. I didn't really. I didn't really cry over it, bro. I've always had this mindset. Like, if I can't control it, yeah, I'm not gonna let it get to me. All I was doing in there is doing what I called shadow boxing every day, lifting weights every day. Where is it, Walton? Yeah, I was in the notorious, the notorious HMP, yeah. fucking Walton. Grammy. It was horrible. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, what was your uh, experience of spending six months in Walton like? It was during COVID. We only got out the cell half an hour a day. They locked the yard off because they were doing scaffolding, building a new wing, so we didn't get sunlight for like three, four months. <laughs> um, the food, obviously, that I, 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 I eat fish now. But prior to me eating fish, because I've only been eating fish since I got out of jail, I've been I was a vegan for like fifteen plus years. Imagine being in Walton as a vegan, lad. Yeah. The shit is scrunchy. It's, it's, it's just fucking baguettes and fucking. It's just fillers, lad. Isn't yeah, it? just baguettes, carbs, 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 rice, pasta. I can't I it. it's, I've never it's the the. Shite I, boiled I, I eat clean all year round, me bro. Being eating clean from young, in there, lad, just was depressing, bro. But. The craziest thing that did I you put seen. weight on in there as well? Did you? Did I, you? I did, but that's mainly because I was just lifting every day. Like yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm an athlete, but I'm not a weightlifter. Our sport is predominantly cardio. Fighting mm. is you got burning out, a lot yeah. of yeah. So even though I'm always in shape, I don't get massive. We're in there, lad. I was just lifting every day. I got up to about eighty three kilos, the biggest I've ever been in my life, probably. It's probably heavier than what you weigh, isn't it? Lad, I'm, I, I fight at 65 kilos. Yeah, so you're lifting your body weight plus. Yeah. Which is great. Yeah. Which is about right as well. Yeah, I was I was big, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was like, what, six months in there? Did you, was you thinking, this is it? I'm fucking getting a five like you are, kid. Lad, do you know what? Every single person who had shown me depths to in there, mm. they'd be like, lad, why don't you just plead guilty, bro? And get your get your third off now, or get your mitigation because you you're a professional fighter and you've taught kids and you've done it. Get your mitigation in, lad. You get time off and that. And then I just sat there like looking at me depths. I'd read me depths and I'd be like, I'm going home. I'm going home. Shh, next minute you read it the next night and you go, I'm getting slammed, me bro. Your head just goes in there, bro. Was the evidence like to to support the no, allegations? No. So so what happened was. In, in, in the the witness who come to court and, and testified, I'm I'm not in any of his statements. But then, after the crime was committed, he's come back twenty months later, and then added you in. Added my name in. Glad it was mad. Like I I I guilty by association. Basically, that was with my cousin every day. And we were little bastards and that, yeah. you know what I mean? Not now, but that's what we were doing, lad. We were fucking up to no good. And then. Um, it's mad it's mad how it's even gone down as a burglary lad the, the guy who went to court he was basically a stash for me because he was holding drugs and then um, he was robbing drugs out of the stash and selling them on the street someone's heard he's selling drugs on the street so they kicked his door off and robbed him and then obviously my cousin's not happy the shit's gone missing so he battered him and the, the kid went to the police yeah and, and just, that was it yeah and okay. the police said that we've kicked the door off entered the house and stole his bank card and we've drew 80 English pounds, bro. How much? 80 English pounds. 18 English pounds? 80, 80. Zero. So oh. I was in jail for 80 pounds, bro. Is that what it was? Yeah, so you're down for 80 quid's worth of... Well, I've never been a robber in my life, bro. Yeah. been a lot of things, but not a thief, yeah. not a burglar. The saddest part of it all, bro, you know what got me the most vex over the old period? Do you ever remember uh, in town where Boots is? Like the escalator to St John's, they used to have that big screen. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, over Christmas, when I'd left, they'd done this thing called Festive Fugitive. Oh yeah, 
<laughs> oh, lad, they had me face up on the full screen with Fo- an on. Photoshop the Christmas hat, and it said at the bottom, "Beware Christmas burglars." Oh, lad, all my mates were ringing me, taking pictures. Lad, what's this on about burglaries? Lad, when were you in the bags? I'm like, I'm explaining to me family. So all the shame's kicking oh, in and the embarrassment. Lad, that was the most embarrassing part. You know, when when I got kicked out of my gym in Malaysia, mm. the guy who owned the gym was saying, "But well, can't you just give back what you stole?" And I was going, mate, I've told you a million times and I never stole it. I, like, I told them everything about my life, what I used to do, and that's what they knew. But I was like, I was never a robber. And they're like, yeah, 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 but can't you just pay back the money that was stole? I'm like, mate, you're not hearing it. I'm not, lad. Ah, that's the thing that hate me the most. I don't People think, think it works like that. It doesn't even work like that, no. does it? No, it's if you know you're not something, then something comes up, and it's just, it's just. No, now, now my name's clear. It is what it yeah. is. But then you Google my name, lad. It just comes up all the articles. Burglary, robbery, the the, and it, and it ruined me opportunities. Lad, people think, man, I don't want to sponsor the house robber. Yeah, yeah. What what big brand? Jim Shark gonna sponsor some house burglar? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not a chance. So it was. It was. It was. It was ruining all me um, my was, opportunities. Yeah, yeah. But now I'm acquitted, lad. No one can say nothing. So what happened? You go to court, and you're fighting it. You're fighting it. So you go to trial. Yeah, that yeah. must have been a big. Big fucking big one hanging over you going to stand in. Do you have a jury and everything there? I had full jury. I um, went to court and two other lads from Walton, they were on a murder trial. Yeah. So I'm like to the you know, when you go to court, you're in the court cell, I'm like, put me in with the lads over there. I'm in with them. And I'm there like stressing. They're just joking and laughing. It's nothing to them. They've been on trial for fucking six weeks or something. This is my first day of trial, so I'm still like oh, Oh, my head's falling off. What's court gonna be like? Oh, what if the jury don't like me? Oh, what? what, what the, I'm all stressing. And they're like, don't worry about it, bro. So I've come in, sat down. After speaking to my solicitor, my solicitor said, "Cause you've run trial, you're looking at a seven to 11. And I'm just going, what? A seven eleven? <laughs> yeah. I've come back to the lads and I'm going, yeah, I'm looking at seven to eleven years. And he's just gone, is that it? They're looking at big jail. And he's gone, lad. Just plead guilty, yeah. Because of your mitigation and because you flew in a pre now, you'll probably still get 30 40% off with your mitigation and your 10% off. Just plead guilty. Was you thinking about it? I swear to you now, at that moment I went. Yeah, um, press the buzzer. Tell the um, tell my solicitor I want to speak to her. I'd made my mind up at that point that I'm going to plead guilty because I thought, fuck this, 7 to 11, that's my life done. And he goes to me. But the only thing is, you'll never know. And I just went, wow. Who said this? The, the kid who's on the murder trial. You you'll, went, you'll never know. If you if you win it all. Yeah, not, yeah, and I went, wow, yeah. So what? If I get a guilty, I do me, get me feared off. I'm out in three, four years, whatever. Don't on tag, cat D, whatever. I get out and then I'll still, what? Be thinking, oh, imagine if I would have run trial that day. Where would I be? Could I be in the UFC now? Where would it be? Would I have all this money? Would it be famous? Would it not that I care about money and fame, but it'd still be on your mind, wouldn't it? Yeah. And I'm not that guy, bro. I just thought, fuck that, I've come this far. I pled not guilty, let's go it all the way. The way I looked at it, whether I've done five years, whether I've done three years, whether I've done eleven years, my career would have been over, lad, I'm twenty eight. Yeah. I'm not no spring chicken anymore, I'm sixteen, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So the way I looked at it. The jail would have finished my career anyway, and that's all I'm really asked about. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm asked about my family, I love my family, but I do this for them as well. So I thought, you know what, I'm running it, lad. And I just decided then, my solicitor come back and said, it's all right, love. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> don't need you now. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, just went up there and just... just and what was it like, the feeling of hearing not guilty? <sighs> lad, it was mad. There was this woman on the jury, bro, yes, she was like... She, she was like looking at me and smiling and that. And I'm thinking, she, nah, 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 not on. Nah, nah, she's not looking at me. And then I'm thinking the next day, boom, she's, she's there again on the jury and she's like, <laughs> I'm thinking, is she smiling at me? Look, do you know when he said not guilty, the yeah. jury can leave? As she's walking out, she went. <laughs> I was like, go on, girl. I got a unanimous not guilty. Yeah. Every single person on the jury said he was not there. Well, So... When I've gone, when after the the court, the, after the everything's done, and it's time for the jury to make their decision. They sent me down to the dock. It was five p.m. So when I've come down, the guys who who lock you in your cell and that the court screws, they're like, "Lad, you'll be coming back tomorrow." You, I said, "Why? My court's done." 
They were like, do you think they're making a decision in 10 minutes, bro? This court closes at half five, six o'clock. If they don't make their decision in 10 minutes, you're coming back tomorrow. Normally it takes them hours. Meh. Lad, I've literally got down. And then another court screw said, do you want you upstairs? So I'm like, my decision. It's quick. I've come, I've come upstairs and they went, we've got a question for you, Mr. Rock. And they've asked me a question. I can't remember what the question is. You know, as soon as they ask me that question, what comes into my mind? Reasonable doubt. If they've got a question, that means they doubt something. Yeah. If they have got any doubt in their mind, they cannot find you guilty. I went down like that, back into the cells. I'm going home, boys. <laughs> <laughs> and me mate's like, lad, it's only a question. I'm like, lad, I'm going home. In 10 minutes, they come back. Come up. Not guilty. In 10 minutes, bro. Did you find out what happened to the other two, the, the, the kids that were on trial for murder? Nah. Nah. No. I haven't even found out. Hopefully, they busted it, because you know what? They told me it weren't even them. So... You've got to knock Yelsey. Brilliant. Yeah. You're going home. Yeah. So your life now starts, yeah. you know, without any any looking over your shoulder. Yeah, no repercussions. No, no repercussions. Police, no. No. I think, um, I think yeah, she, when I was in, in Walton, you know, I had a little bit of an interview yeah. on... Um, Do you know what I've seen it? Do you, still, do you still play it now? Yeah, yeah. Same, same the radio, the yeah. PTMP Walton, and... It was all, and you know, for me, it's to, to sit in a, a, a little interview room and share something, and then realise that they, they're, they're playing it constantly on um, on on the internal prison radio system, and people coming to me going, "Fucking hell, that story was uh, quite honest and open." Do you know how many men on the wing come out and say, "Did you watch that last night?" Because they just only come in. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Watch what it was on Channel Two. Oh yeah, uh, man, yeah. seen that, seen yeah. it ten times. Yeah, it's been fucking, it's been like. <laughs> killing people off but uh, <laughs> that I I feel privileged to, to have had the opportunity because it, it gave me an insight into you know how honest you can be and how attractive how attractive it is to, to others when they are like they, okay, they fucking suffer they've struggled see I've, I've committed loads of crimes I've been fucking nicked for bags I've been nicked for fucking robberies I've been nicked for violence um, but that wasn't the passion who I was, but I'm shitting, yeah. shitting there, mate, and I'm feeling the shame and the embarrassment, and I know it was the addiction that drove me to commit all those uh, offences that were all fueled for drugs, because look, I've about five years in recovery, I haven't used, I haven't been nicked once, so it's a no-brainer, isn't it? Mm, mm. Put drugs in me, I'm getting nicked every fucking day, yeah. or I'm, I'm getting chased every day, or I'm doing shit, I'm shit. Something you should be. Here's the answer. The five years. Not once have I been arrested. Not once have the police pulled me up. Man, what's your name? We know you. We, we, you know. So now I feel that was um, it was it was great to have that opportunity to share that. And I went to prison clean. Fucking hell! I got nicked. I was like yourself. I was like on on the right path by this time. Go to rehab. Sits in this. Um, goes to court with a little bag. I had a little phone as well, stuck it up my ass. Got in, sat in the fucking, the yacht chair, the alarm went off. Mm. Ah, it was bad. It's got down there, son. Yeah, sat in the yacht chair, and he went, he said, Deep. He went, you're having to have your head. I said, fuck, fuck, shit. He went, no, no, what is it? Sat back again, and I had my ass right on the edge. And it never went off. Yep. I got through. Got through. I, I had no charge yet. No SIM card, nothing. No, I had a SIM card, but no fucking credit. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't even know the number either, so I couldn't even go give put some. But I ended up finding out and getting it sorted. So this was the kind. Of, I, I think the things you can offer people now, you know, are more important yeah. than anything. Yeah. So you're out, you're out. So what, 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 what's, what's been your, your life so far? Was you, was you, heading to next gen prior to going to prison? So. It's crazy. Before I went to jail, it's like everyone's on your dick. Everyone wants to know you. Yeah, you're up there, lad. You're winning world titles. Yeah. Oh, everyone's saying you're the next biggest thing. I'm, I'm pretty humble guy. I don't think it got to me yet, but you think everyone's your mate. I'll yeah. say that. Do you know when I went to jail, 3,000 of my followers disappeared from Instagram, all unfollowed me. No one messages me anymore. I got an iPhone in there, bro. I paid 15 ton for that iPhone. And I'm going, lad, I wake up every morning to at least 300 messages. I'm thinking, yeah, watch when I log into this now. Yeah. It's going to be <laughs> popping. Power. Unlocked it and gone. 
No messages. Ten messages. What? Checked me followers. What? Seven thousand followers. I went to jail with eleven thousand followers. Where's everyone gone? Yeah, bro. Everyone forgets about you, lad. We think, ah, he's finished him. He's done out here. But there were certain people who stuck by me, bro. Me manager, Sid Mogul Management. Shout out to Sid. They stood by me. They got me a legal team. No, did all he asked me is, did you do it? No. Well, I'm with you a million percent. Anything you need, I've got you. Even if you get found guilty, I'm still with you. Yeah. And another right. one was next gen, bro. Even when I'm in jail, they were saying, do you need anything for court? We'll get a written a written character reference off Molly or Paddy or I'll write you one. When you get out of jail, you can always come train with us. Lad, I'm a loyal person, me, bro. To me, that spoke more than anything because no other cunt was messaging me back. Yeah. Everyone else was thinking, ah, he's finished. The people who stick with you, lad, they go to show, like, these are my real mates. How many of your mates wanted to come on a visit? How many of my mates wanted to come and see me? But then when I'm out in Asia and I'm doing bits... Oh, lad, when you're in Liverpool, come and check me. Yeah, it's... I was in Liverpool. I was in what? In jail, mate? <laughs> throw, throw something over, at least. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> throw so, me a mobile. <laughs> did, you have, did you ever have any uh, problems with drugs? Like, fucking Never. degree and nothing? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think... I don't think cannabis is... A dr- a dr- I don't want to say it's not a drug because the modern cannabis has changed, on it? Yeah, you can't really. We'll yeah. avoid that one because you don't need the political kind of Yeah, no, I don't, I don't smoke weed. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm fully clean. I'm off the weed. But I did used to smoke weed. I've never smoked tobacco. I've never drank alcohol. I've never took a drug in my life. I feel like if I like something, I'm all in. I'm 110%. Yeah. And I knew if I liked alcohol, I'd be an alcoholic. If I liked heroin, I'd be a smackhead. Yeah. If I liked coke, I'd be a cokehead. So I knew... I'm not even going to try it because I know if I like it, I'll be addicted. Yeah. For me, the weed thing, a little bit of recovery now and then, you saw your back's hurting. But the CBD? Yeah, CBD and weed. I, yeah, I used to smoke weed in Asia and that. So did you, um, how did you, did you have any problems like, like most people do in prison coping with the regime and the bang up and the long hours and the fucking monotonous boring fucking pad mates that you get in? Do you know what? For padmates, I was all right, you know. I had oh, the boys. Had a, oh, yeah. I never had to touch me. I always had nice ones, lad, like the proper boys and that. Yeah. Like, my first padmate, he's, he's my proper mate now, still to this day. Like, I'd do anything for him. He's a good he's a good kid and that. Probably even shouldn't be in jail, lad. He just went down the road. Is he still path. there? Yeah, yeah. Yes. He got like, I think he got like eight or nine, lad. Sad. But only like 20 got kids and that as well. Sad, man. But, yeah, um, it was some of them screws, lads. Some of them screws think the fucking police or something, bro. Like the young get, ones or the older ones. Don't get me wrong. You meet you meet someone with proper scousers, lad, and yeah. you, you open your flap and you see something they shouldn't, and just go. Tsh. But then you got other ones who start. Have, What's that smell? What you've got a phone in it, mate. We're in jail. Just leave us alone. We're not causing no trouble. We're not fighting. If people want to smoke weed in jail, they should be able to smoke weed. It you is, let them yeah. you, you, instead. They'd rather them go the med hatch and take pharmaceuticals. That's my problem. Yeah, like, they're on a, they're on the methadone now, and the me, you know there's a massive like and what else? The, the spice epidemic. Uh, they is, don't do it, nothing to spice heads. You know why? Because they're, they're petrified that these spice heads. If you don't have spice, a screw's getting kettled or someone's getting cut on the wing. Yeah. When these guys have got spice, then okay, he just mongs out in his cell. Fuck that lad. Yeah, I've seen it, mate. Fuck that, I've lad. seen people getting wide, cut wires open Serious. just for a little card, you know what I mean? Serious. And the money that they're making on them cards, fifty quid a little a little sheet of spice like that. Yeah, it's all on paper. Mm. You know, I've never ever fucking touched it. I'm grateful that like I stopped taking drugs before it was even legit, you know what I mean? Or yeah, everyone in was jail, on I'll write you off that shit, mate. Yeah, the likes of Kess and fucking Oh, oh, lucky, mate! Uh, magic. Cat's big in jail, isn't it? Yeah. Magic's big in jail. I've, 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 it's mad, isn't it? She, I'm an old school fucking junkie, so I knew <laughs> it was either, it was either fucking eight ball Rocky or fucking swag. That was it. You know Rocky, what I mean? You know. <laughs> go to jail these days, man. I'm going in clean, and I've never yeah. used anything since. You know what I mean? And I've been, and I, and I, and I, I read this fucking second book on my observations in Walton Jail. You know, on the spice epidemic, um, the mental health. The drug-induced 
fucking psychosis, mm. the drug induced violence. Because you know, you, I couldn't look at anyone in the eye when I first went. I was thinking, fuck that, mate, it's, it's gonna go off here. Because I'm a little bit of a lump, mate, and I react a bit too fucking quick to other people's uh, fucking contracts. So I didn't want to get involved. I thought I just want to get through this now as smooth as possible, try and get out as quickly as I can, go through the system, get to a cat D. And that's what was going through me. And I was at, I had fucking barriers put in front of me and telling you, I'm right. I had fucking people throwing the eyebrows at me thinking I'm going to end up pulling his windpipe out I'm going to, I'm, I'm in the park and I'm fighting with myself to go just fucking just stay calm lad. Yeah. and just then being like like a bit of a people pleaser and a bit more like overly fucking pleasant with someone just not to, 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 to create any fucking conflict you know I've even been st- I even like had a, had set up a self will group you know self uh, help group in, in Hindley for people who were in the same fucking position as me used drugs and got clean and then when we had this group fucking session that they'd allocated us f- to, to have, I got fucking the security come and raided me pad and said I was cultivating gang culture and I was dealing fucking spice. I was thinking, you're fucking joking, aren't you? The only thing we're dealing in there is a bit of love and looks. We're mm-hmm. not giving out fucking drugs, mate. I'm not here. But, you know, the suspicion kind of, you know, people putting fucking things in the box. It's just, you oh, know, it's horrible, that taking, your, taking, horrible. Your, taking your cat D off you while I'm in a cat seat, just being given a cat, they're going to take that off you. I'm thinking, do you know what, fuck it, lad, I'm going to bang this kid out. He's a fucking whopper. He's the one. Who, and by just like sticking with sticking to my guns and doing the right thing, you know, people seeing through it for what it was. Even like governors went, look, it's fucking full of shit, Bill. We know you're, you're keeping your head down. And I think that's what it is. It's about persevering. Mm. And it sounds like that's all you've ever done. You just persevered, knew you were in the right. You know, you knew it was just fear keeping you on the run. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So what are your plans? Is it any UFC plans going on? Anything? That's the real question, lad. Let's get this on. Come on, let's do it. <sighs> they always draw me out, don't they? <sighs> I'm fighting for the title August 20th. Um, these ones aren't announced, but if I get out of that fresh, not to say I'm looking past that because I am not looking past this fight August 20th. I am fully focused on whoever they put in front of me. I'm going to finish him in a spectacular fashion and people are going to say, Shem's back. Trust me. But if I get out of that fight fresh, I've got a second world title lined up in Crystal Palace in September. And I'm being off with FCC main event title in December as well. So if I can do all three of them and become three world titles, then how's the UFC not looking at me, lad? Yeah. They know who I am. They're not yeah. daft. But Cage Warriors is there also. Maybe Cage Warriors could be an avenue. Like right now, I'm just focused on fulfilling one of my dreams of main eventing in Liverpool and selling out a show. And that's going to be my next fight, August 20th. Like, I've been watching this scene for so long and so jealous of all these people fighting in Liverpool going, ah, you just don't know how lucky you are. That's all I ever want to do. That's all I ever wanted to do when I first started yeah. fighting. My first amateur fight, I stepped out that cage and went, oh, wouldn't that be boss if that was in Liverpool, lad? To me brother. And my brother's like, I know we'd shut shit down, you know. And now it's coming into into fruition, lad. And I, I can't wait, bro. I yeah. seriously can't wait. I can't wait. I'm excited for you. <laughs> so... What are your thoughts on on Paddy Pimley? He's a he's a character lad, and he's he, he he is what he says he is. He's a cash cow for the UFC lad. Yeah, like he's proof. Dan and Till's proof. Uh, Molly's proof that scouts in this city now have got the biggest opportunities in mixed martial arts than ever before. They've made some serious money in that promotion. And it just goes to show why can't anyone else do that? Why so, can't yeah. another scouts do that? You've got four big, four of the biggest names in Liverpool, and and, and just the outside reason. Tom Aspinall, brilliant. Oh yeah, Tom as well. Yeah. Every base yeah. you've got, you know, Molly McCann, Paddy, Paddy the Baddy, you know, Darren Till. He's just won his last fight, hasn't he? So hopefully, like, they, they, it'll be all on the up for him. You know, Paddy fucking looks like he's unstoppable. I, you know, what I like about Paddy, right? I've, I interviewed Paddy, and what an intelligent younger man he is he's a, he's a lovely fella and the first fight he's gone out in style bang the kid's gone first round he's out finished the second one I was thinking fucking hell this is something different isn't it where he's choked him out so he just goes to show the skill set he has yeah. he's not just a one a one fucking hit wonder he could just bang Molly she was lucky to be back staying in the UFC I think she was on her last 
And yeah. last 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 chance on the um, on on a couple of fights ago. Yeah. And that elbow, fuck him. You know, you'll never hear the end of it. No. And I hope you don't either yeah, because no. it's yeah, fucking no. it's fucking incredible. It's like she's she's so proud of what she's done and I'm so proud for it and it was just I was just so over, overwhelmed and you know it's, they've sat in this room me and uh, Molly and, and Tony and we've shared some stuff and it's been great you know just listening and still doesn't matter I still try and fit in even though that part of my life is trying to pull me back and say you're a fucking scumbag lad you're not even worthy of sitting in the, in the same room as some of these these athletes who've never been down that road but when you hear their stories you hear Molly's or you hear Tony's, there's similarities. Yeah. There might be a lot of differences, but there is similarities and, and, and they were close enough to to be on that path where, unfortunately, you know, there was a lot of contributing factors in my life that led to another path. Yeah. It doesn't make me any difference. It just means that I was a little bit fucking ski with and things weren't going too well and I kind of gravitated to the criminality, drugs and shit like that. But yeah, so for you, UFC is hopefully on the cards. It's not hopefully. I'm going to the okay, UFC. Okay, you know what, Razor Lady? So CM's not fucking hopefully going. He is going. It's just a matter of time. Like when? If you look in this city now, yeah, who's next? Tell me it's not me. It's got to be, honey. Yeah, it's, it's name someone else now. And, I, and look, and if you're right, I'll agree with you. Not to say that there's not great fighters in this city, because there is. There's many. But it's not just how well you can there's fight. There's a few, there's a few, um, I mean, like four corners, we've got a good few yeah. uh, potential fighters there. John Gillies training for yeah. some good kids no, yeah. there. And John, yeah. John's got some lethal fucking, some some guys there. Um, who else, you know, next gen. What about, is the Mazda? Is You've got Cowabon as well. Cowabon. Got, um, it's only, you know, I'm not too sure, is in there? You know, the likes Darren. of Darren, Darren yeah, yeah got Darren guys, and Tom. got Raph as well, and he's coming up, I think he's six and all. Is he? Yeah, he, he's good. There is, there's a few. He's my weight class featherweights yeah. as well. So like, I, I just look, I just love watching this scene, lad. Yeah. Like, I could sit here and spiel off names all night to you. I mean, you'd be going, who? Who's he? You got this amateur guy. He lost against him, and he's. Did you ever watch Scano? Stano. Scano. Scano. Mark Scano. He's in um. Mark Scano. Um. He's the fighter. With the, he's with the butcher. Is that him? No, I can't. I don't know, mate. Mark, Mark, I've done. Mark's been on this. I've a little. Okay. Mark, Mark was a. But old Teppy, Teppy the Beast. Nah. Um, Murray. Murray, yeah. 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 They're all mates. They're all mates, Teppy and. Yeah. And so these are like the older yeah. generation. Yeah. These okay. are these are fucking like. Okay. You were just like fucking starting off thinking about it, then weren't you? I only started when I was twenty-one, turning twenty-two. So these are the yeah, these these, me, these are the originals, aren't they? The yeah. OGs. Yeah. yeah, which we wouldn't be without them type of man. No, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So what what are your plans? Because we're coming to the end now, and um, it's been really interesting listening to your story, and I've enjoyed this. So what are your plans uh, going forward? I know you talked about the UFC, and that's. But like in life in general, you know, what would you like to do within the community? Um, is there anything? So for me, um, martial arts, is, uh, mixed martial arts is my career now. Like I need to be the best athlete I can be. I need to excel as well as I can in my career so I can do the other things I want to do. My biggest goal isn't to be in the UFC. That's not my biggest goal. My biggest goal in this sport in life right now even I don't have a bigger goal than this is I want to ultimately be able to have the opportunity to work with people who come from a background like mine who maybe go parents aren't around or didn't do well in school or their older brother was a drug dealer so he wants to be a drug dealer or they don't have no positive role models or the groomed by gangs or whatever it may be. Yeah. Everyone's everyone's situation of why they get into crime is going to be different, in it? But I can relate to all of them. Exactly, why? Yeah. Because I've been in and done it the same way you can. Yeah. They don't want to hear from no yeah. politician. They don't want to hear from Boris. Busy. <laughs> they don't want to hear, yeah, they don't want to hear, please come into the school going, don't do drugs. Yeah. But they'll look at us and they'll listen to us. Because we can say, listen, lad, don't you think I've been there? Yeah. I can tell you now 10 stories. And you'll go, oh, yeah, I've done that as well. So for me, I feel like it's not only what I want to do, it's my duty, lad. I've yeah. got to give something back. After yeah. all the taking we've done, lad, we need to give something back. Yeah, like and it. I'd love one day to have my own centre or my own type of gym where no one can tell me nothing. 
and this is how it's going. And if you're on your toes, you're not getting kicked out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd love to have kids who can come in under the age of 18, under the age of 21 even, and just be like, you just don't need to pay. Brilliant. Everything's free. And we're going, they're going to use martial arts to better your life opportunities, yeah. whether it's just for the mental side or whether they want to do it as a career. Because not everyone who does martial arts wants to be a fighter, lad. Yeah. Some people are just suffering with mental health and it's just a little blowout, lad. Exactly, yeah. yeah. You know yourself going through your fitness journey, yeah, lad. Yeah. How, how better do you feel after the workout, after oh, eating clean for six it's weeks? Just been pissing clear. And this is what I'd like to portray to the next. Because I honestly believe, yeah, the majority of kids who get up to no good, they don't have a hobby, they don't have a passion. So what you do, you go out on the streets. Before you know it, you're hanging around with the wrong crowd. Before you know it, you're drinking on the weekends. Before you know it, you're smoking weed. Before you know it, you're sniffing coke. Before you know it, you're getting groomed by the older ones to now graft for them. Maybe if that same kid, because them kids aren't stupid, let me tell you, kids are very smart. Maybe if that same kid had a hobby and a passion, whether it's dancing, singing, whatever it may be. Look at Liverpool now. We've got rappers who are doing it. We've got footballers who are killing it. you got Trems, A-Star, Trent, Fighters, Paddy, Boxers, Marcel, like whatever your avenue is now, whatever you want to pursue, whether it's painting, whether it's ballet, you want to play the violin, we've got avenues now in this city for scouts talent you want to learn it or you're already half decent at it and you want to get somewhere with it so i feel like the the avenue that i can help people in is martial arts brilliant and with yeah. one sentence at the end of every podcast you always ask about a pale of wisdom as a so in one in one sentence what would you say to a young shem walking through the doors of life if you had the opportunity to, the opportunity now to see yourself and say something to yourself in one sentence, what would you say? Don't forget who's watching. Brilliant. I'll make that, mate. Respect, fam. Respect. <laughs>